Thank you, guys. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. All good? Sweet. All right, so uh, I'm gonna talk to you guys about character design. Um, I'm gonna go through a quick bio, uh, basically how I got to where I am and what I'm doing now. Um, I'm gonna do um, some character design process, show you kind of from start to finish how you design a character. And then I'm also gonna talk about what makes a good character design versus uh, a bad one. But first, uh, I have a request for you, and that's uh, can you grab paper and a pencil if you haven't already, because I'm gonna give you an assignment. Perfect. So while people are talking to me, I like to doodle a lot, and I want you guys to just do the same. Uh, and since Halloween's coming up, your assignment's to draw a witch. You can draw any type of witch you want, as warty or non-warty as you want, uh, old, young, male, female. Um, but then at the end, I wanna, I wanna see them all. So just as an FYI, you have about 30 minutes for your witch. <laughs> all right, so uh, I am the youngest of five kids. That's me on the end there. Um, I was always, Doing art, I ended up going to Notre Dame, and I thought, all right, I wanna be an artist, but I wanna have a practical profession that actually makes some money, so I'll do architecture. And so I got into that, and within a couple courses, I realized I hate drawing buildings, which is, is bad if you're an architect. <laughs> um, so I switched to industrial design, which um, was really cool. Um, so for those that don't know, um, it's basically product design, so coming up with what products look like, how they feel, um, what the ergonomics are, how they function. Um, so I went into that, I majored in that, um, and coming out of school, I got a job in St. Louis at a design firm called Metaphase Design Group, and we did a bunch of really awesome stuff. It was super fun. I spent nine years there, so I started as a design intern and worked my way up, and eventually I was a design director there for the last three years uh, that I worked there. And we did all sorts of stuff. We did medical design, uh, so designing uh, ear, nose, and throat surgical devices where we'd get to watch a surgery and then figure out how to make the design better. We did Budweiser cans on the other end of that spectrum. <laughs> um, so it was kind of all over the map. Um, and it was a really engaging field. Uh, and we won lots of awards, and, and that was awesome. But uh, there, became, there came a point where I was noticing a trend and it was in my notes. And basically, um, as much as I like product design, when I would sketch on my free time, I wasn't sketching cars or products, I was sketching characters. And so kind of at the start of uh, working at Metaphase, maybe one little character would show up on a page among my other notes. And then slowly it was a couple characters. And then eventually it was just no notes at all and just all <laughs> characters. And I remember kind of hiding them away and being like, ah, I don't want you know this like executive at Medtronic to see me sketching characters as I'm trying to listen to them talk about a surgical device. Um, so it, it felt like that was maybe the wrong thing to be hiding that away and that maybe that was what I really wanted to do. Um, so I thought, all right, I love characters and I love animated films. I'm gonna be an animator. And so I was like, all right, cool. How do I shift from industrial design to animation? Um, so I thought, obviously I should talk to an animator, get their opinion. And they said, no, if you wanna work in animation, you don't necessarily have to be an animator. Um, so they explained this big, huge pipeline that happens in animation and there are all these different phases that end up at that final output. And each one of these phases is a different job within animation. And so initially it was really overwhelming, um, but it's a, this, this animator friend helped guide me through and was like, well, what do you wanna do? Um, and I said, you know, well, I've been, I'd gotten into management and, and design and I, I enjoyed that on some level, but I wanted to get back to drawing and, and uh, get back to the basics of why I got into art in the first place. Um, and he said, okay, well then you wanna be in the pre-production phase and the upfront part where you're coming up with ideas and sketching every day. And I said, all right, cool. And then I told him about how I love characters and drawing faces and he said, great, so you wanna be in that design phase, that upper right corner. And as I kind of talked to him more, um, 
he explained what design or visual development does. And basically, it's that uh, it occurs during pre-production and it establishes the look and the feel of the show. Um, and it includes character design, set design, environment design, prop design. So for Up, for instance, and I did not do these, <laughs> um, but coming up with Russell and what he looks like, or Carl, or the, or the house, um, these were all designed by artists um, before they ever became the final you know, computer model that's rendered in the film. So I thought, okay, awesome. I have a better direction now. I wanna be a character designer. Um, so part of this process has been just figuring out what this field is, because um, I feel like you know, coming into art school or uh, talking to other people, a lot of what you hear is uh, graphic design, painter, architect, and there are all these smaller subsets of design that people don't talk about. Um, so once I finally found this, I was, I was hooked. Uh, my wife and I moved to Portland, and she was shifting from medical school medical school to starting to uh, practice to uh, earn a salary in residency and that enabled me to go back to school. Um, so I studied at a school called Schoolism which if you haven't heard of it I would highly recommend it um, but it's basically a place where all of these visual development artists um, that work at Pixar and DreamWorks and uh, Warner Brothers all the big studios they come and teach there so you can basically take courses, get video lessons, and then submit your assignments, and they'll draw over your work and say, all right, this part's working, this is awesome, this part's not working, you need to work on this. Um, so that was extremely helpful for me, so that when we moved to Portland, I started those courses, I said, all right, I'm, I made a clean break from industrial design, um, and started focusing solely on character design. Um, and I knew education was, was the key to upping my skills because I had been drawing every day as a, as a product designer, but that's an entirely different type of drawing than what you're doing in character design. So I drew and drew and did figure drawing and filled sketchbooks. Um, and eventually, and this is you know, an abbreviated talk, it's a long process to get there, but uh, you build up a, enough of a portfolio where you can start to get smaller freelance jobs and those build to bigger freelance jobs. Um, and so basically, uh, for the past three years now, I've been working full-time freelance doing character design. Um, and I also do a fair amount of markets and cons, so I'll sell at Portland Saturday Market pretty often. Um, and in addition, I do kids' books where I can fit that in. Um, and those don't make any money, just if you're interested. <laughs> but they're really fun, and I love them, and I would just do those if I could. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the mix for me, is uh, freelance design markets and, and kids' books now. And um, you know, working as a freelance character designer or a freelance designer in any field, there are ebbs and flows to um, work and, and how busy you are, so this enables me to kind of fill any dry spots with, with uh, different areas of design. So that's a very quick bio on basically how I get from where I was in industrial design to character design. Um, and now I'm gonna talk through what is character design and what's the process of designing a character. So you see character design everywhere. So it's in um, feature film, short film, TV animation, commercial animation, video games. Um, logo design, kids books, it's, it's everywhere. <clears throat> and the kind of most succinct way I could describe, describe what it is, is it's the process of giving a visual form to a written description of a character. So when I, at the start of this, described to you guys, all right, I want you to draw a witch um, and give a few physical descriptors, it's your job to take that idea and then create uh, a physical description, or a, a, a visual from that. So for instance, Holly Baker, librarian, intelligent, introverted, and this description could come from a client or a script or whatever. Um, it's the idea of taking that and building it into character concepts. Um, and so that's what's really fun to me is you can give a ton of people that same description and they'll come up with different ideas. <clears throat> um, so now kind of 
we have the overall idea of what character design is, but then how do I design a character? Where do you even start when you're, sh when you're thinking about designing a character? Um, so here, actually, my industrial design background came in handy because it's the same exact process for me. It's, you start with research, you figure out as much as you can about the subject, you ideate, come up with a ton of ideas, way more than you need, don't settle on your first idea. You down select down to the better ideas, refine those, present to a client, finalize. Um, and there can be more or fewer steps within that process, but that's the basic process of it. Um, so to break this down, I'll walk you through a, a recent uh, freelance project. So we were working with uh, a client that needed um, basically a redesign of Wonder Woman for a, uh, let's say, a smaller um, application of, of using her. So we had, to, we had to basically simplify our design from a really naturalistic Gal Gadot Wonder Woman to a very simplified uh, uh, character design that could read on a small scale. So again, research, figure out as much as you can about that character. So outfit, poses, what's the general feel, mood, environment, um, enter that world and then start with sketches. And I love to sketch small, so I'll <coughs> sketch here and do inch by inch sketches. They're very tiny. And for me, that's critical because if it doesn't read that big, it's not gonna read well larger. So if it's, especially for a more iconic design like these, you have to really make sure it works on a small scale. Um, and it forces you, you know, physically sketching on paper to not get caught in details because when you're sketching in Photoshop, you can keep zooming and zooming, and, you know, tweaking little tiny things and miss, miss the big picture. So once we have uh, kind of a bunch of uh, concepts up there, and this is just drawing on the research and drawing on uh, basically different proportions and different, trying to get a, a range of concepts and a variety. Um, once you have a ton of those up, you can down select to, all right, well, this is kind of a, a good range where we're go from going from really simple hot dog Wonder Woman over here to really uh, kind of more stylized, uh, more, not the arms uh, aren't naturalistic, but more naturalistic proportions. Um, and so step after that is to refine. So basically cleaning up those lines, seeing how you can kind of plus that design and make it, uh, improve upon that initial sketch. Um, and so that's really a fun process too because even though you, you have that initial sketch, there's so much design that happens between here and here um, to really refine and, and tweak and zoom in on the details. Um, so at this point, uh, for this client, we presented the client and they selected the, the two they wanted to refine and move forward with. And once you have kind of down-selected to some designs, you can explore the character in more detail. So uh, on the right side, we're exploring different poses and gestures and, and how would this character move if they were animated. And then on the bottom, we're, we're exploring different expressions. So when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're angry, um, and how does each character look? And for me, I like to you know, present them in the exact same format, same color. Um, so that you really get an equal comparison side by side. Um, and so then typically after this, it would go into a turnaround view where you're turning the character to front side back view. Um, and then it'd be off to animation where they would actually animate and move the character. Um, so that's the basic process is to research up front, ideate, down select, refine, and then finalize your design. So now that we know the process, um, what makes a good character design? Um, so I, I like this quote by Uli Meyer where he talks about, um, he was judging a, a character design competition and he said, good character design should work as a sketch. It should come to life when you draw it with a pencil on a piece of paper. It should not need a written explanation or a gag or an environment with lots of side characters to make it work. Um, and I think, at least when I look at uh, a lot of student work, um, there's a tendency to get caught up in the details of rendering a character, uh, an environment, and um, maybe get lost in that where the initial kind of bones of the character aren't quite there. Um, so I like this quote for that reason because it, it forces you to focus on that initial sketch and make sure it works as a sketch. 
So breaking it down even further, to me, these are five elements that are critical to a good character design. So a clear silhouette, solid construction, good variety, rhythm, and then the most important, uh, emotional resonance. So to break those ones down. Um, these are a couple characters I designed for a kid's book I did. Uh, this is Iz and Norb on the right. <clears throat> and it was really important for me to make sure that they read on a small scale, um, that they read quickly, and that you could distinguish the two because they were interacting a lot. So when I see these two, what a clear silhouette means to me is you can break them down into a really simple shape language, right? So is is a circle, norb is a pentagon. Um, and you can see this in, uh, I think Pixar does a, a great job of this. If you look at the uh, up characters, you can break them down into five simple shapes. Um, so clear silhouette makes your characters readable. This also helps when you have a cast of characters to distinguish who's who quickly without kind of getting caught up in the details. Um, solid construction. I, I'm going to talk about this one a little bit more because, again, this is one I see um, uh, in a lot of student, student portfolios that I feel like could be uh, improved. And basically, it's the idea that if you were to pick up that character and pull it off the page, can you turn it in space, and does the drawing hold up? So here you can see Is Nora basically drawn around um, where he's kind of a, a cylinder, and she's more of that dome shape. And I feel like making sure you have good construction starts with drawing through your shapes. So rather than just drawing a shoulder, you draw the entire shoulder rather than uh, just drawing this part of the left arm that's not shown. You draw the entire arm. Um, and the idea there is that, um, again, if you're designing for animation, then when it's actually built in a, in a CAD model or it's uh, even for 2D animation, it, it works in, in every uh, orientation. Um, a trick that I like that I use, even though these are incredibly simple characters, they're very simple shapes, is to build a little maquette or a little clay model, basically. Um, there's a, a clay we used in industrial design called Super Sculpey um, that's great for this because it doesn't leave any residue on your hands and you can just model a little version of your character and then turn it in space. So when I was doing um, this kid's book, I was able to say, all right, this is kind of an upshot, and even though it's a simple form, I can look at the character from that view or take photos, and then I can get a better feel of how that character moves in space. Um, <clears throat> the last comment I'll make on construction is uh, I think it's easier to see construction uh, or understand construction if you see bad construction. So I'll show you the very first character design sketch I did when I moved from industrial design to character design, and I thought this was awesome at the time, um, but it's terrible. <laughs> um, and the design isn't necessarily terrible, but it's the construction that's really off here. So if you look at the two arms, they're very different sizes. If you look at the right side of his, his body, it's kind of melting off the right side. Um, so the idea with better construction, and I drew over this uh, initial sketch is to actually draw through and imagine, you know, it's almost like if this were a, a doll, how would you draw through where all the joints are? Um, so drawing through the shoulders, drawing through the elbows, drawing kind of the, the underpants region, so you like make sure everything actually connects and, and works in 3D space. Um, does that make sense to you guys, kind of the difference between the two? <clears throat> I hate showing that sketch, but it makes a good point. <laughs> um, the next uh, element is good variety. So um, this one's really important as well in that um, it, one of the uh, things my instructor, um, Stephen Silver, always said was avoid the ladder, and I think that's the, the best way for me to remember this. Um, so if you imagine a ladder, all the rungs are exactly evenly spaced. Um, that makes for a really boring, uh, predictable design. So if you vary up that spacing between the main points, it'll make your design more interesting. If you vary up line weight, so going thick to thin, that'll make your design more interesting. If you vary texture, so rather than just um, sticking to kind of one design format, kind of varying, uh, 
varying spacing, varying texture, those all help to build a more interesting design. It also helps with uh, a cast of characters. So if all of these squash were acorn squash, it would be less interesting, right? Uh, the fact that they're all uh, different designs, and this kind of plays back into that first point of clear silhouette. Um, the fact that they're all very clear, distinct shapes, it makes the composition a lot more interesting. Squash plant squash. That's still funny to me. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, <clears throat> next one is rhythm. So the fourth principle. Um, and this one, again, is maybe a little harder to understand initially, but it's basically the idea that there's kind of a movement or a rhythm to your drawing. So rather than everything, you know, again, it plays into variety, but rather than everything being straight line or curve line, it's kind of varying straight against curve. And it's not as, um, it's not as formulaic as that. You don't just put a curve and a straight next to each other and alternate, and then you have a great design. Um, but it is making sure you have a, a balance of those things within your design and making sure there's a variety within your line work um, and not having as many parallel lines, like even you know our skirt versus the jacket, making sure those are at different angles. That'll add variety and good rhythm and, and more interest to your design. And then the last element is emotional resonance. And I really do feel like this is the most important because if you're designing a character their intent is to tell a story, right? So whether it's for a video game or a movie or, or a kid's book. Um, so if you can't connect on an emotional level, then the characters aren't very effective, right? So you can go with uh, sentimentality with is an orb. You can go with a mood. You can just do funny, which is, again, a great way to connect is, <laughs> is if you make people laugh. <clears throat> That's a personal favorite of mine. <laughs> um, but basically, you know, if, if people look at your characters or the scene you've made and, and they don't feel anything, then, then to me that's not a successful, uh, successful design. So to sum those up, uh, good design is a clear silhouette, solid construction, good variety, rhythm, and emotional resonance. Um, so the last thing I'll, I'll show you guys is a quick demo that hopefully will tie some of this together. I also drew a witch earlier today, um, so I'm going to show you my witch drawing uh, at a process video. And then we'll do a Q&A after this. You see this, Toss? It says another app is controlling your sound right now. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Sorry. That's will work. Oh. And it won't work. <laughs> All right, what's going on? Uh, okay. There we go. All right, so the sketch is all done in Photoshop. Um, so to recap, you know, I started with research. I was looking at, you know, different witch characters. I was looking at old women walking around. I love uh, the gnarly hands which have, witches have. Uh, I thought I wanted to do a mischievous witch, or mischievous witch, 
hence Toby Maguire's face. Um, and then I was looking at costume as well. <clears throat> so I always start with kind of a really rough sketch. I moved it small here again because I like to work small, uh, make sure the overall shapes are all working together. <clears throat> um, I flip the drawing a lot and that to me comes into that idea of construction. So it might look really good in one angle and then you flip it and uh, that angle is tricking your eyes and you flip it around and it's obvious to see the falls or the faults or if the character is leaning one way or another is unbalanced. Um, so I do that constantly. I'm always flipping back and forth. <clears throat> so I have the rough sketch kind of worked out. And initially, again, I would have done, you know, 30 designs of this witch before I would have started with the final line work. Um, hands are hard to do. You'll see me mess around and fuss with the hands forever because it's, they're still really hard, no matter how many times you sketch them. So now she's starting to come together, getting that creepy look with the snapping turtle mouth. <coughs> So let me draw the legs and the underpants there. Again, thinking about construction and how our legs would feel or move underneath uh, the skirt. Hands are hard. Uh, hands. Uh. So eventually I just held something and looked at it and that's the best way to draw a hand is to actually do that, figure out what's going on. Uh, I use a Wacom knock knockoff called the Unovo 19 MSPU, I think, but it does the same thing. <laughs> it's a Unovo, Y-I-Y-N-O-V-A, I think, 19 MSPU. It's something close to that. Then the coloring phase, so Maybe most of you know Photoshop, but basically you can put line work on one layer, put the color on a layer underneath. So that's what I was doing there. And then the final, final design, creepy witch lady. Creepy face. <laughs> that was exactly one hour. Because uh, it cut me off after an hour. All right, and then one more slide, I believe. <coughs> eh, that's fine, it's not closing. There we go. All right, so that's it, basically, uh, the key to me is still the fundamental of character design is drawing every day. So doing a mix of figure drawing and just drawing from life, going to coffee shops, drawing people. Um, if you want that emotional resonance in your drawings, then you have to know people and know emotion and have experiences. Um, so draw every day. That's it. Um, I think we're going to do a Q&A now. Um, if you guys don't feel comfortable asking me questions in front of people, feel free to email me. Um, so yeah, any questions? Question. Yeah, what's up? Um, I was curious, uh, drawing like different postures and facial expressions, mm -hmm. it seems like you kind of have to exaggerate those things in a character illustration to get them across. Yeah. Um, where do you go to, do you have like a book that you love that shows a bunch of different expressions or postures or uh, website or? Yeah, um, I don't, but that's a great question. Um, for me, that's the hardest part of, of character design. So I think um, uh, any artist can uh, faithfully replicate a exact scene off a photo, right? But the hard part about character design is abstraction where you're taking 
a naturalistic character and making them a simplified or exaggerated version. And that step in between uh, is the hard part, and that's uh, it's mainly practice. So honestly, like coffee shop sketching, I feel like is really valuable. Also, you can break. Uh, I believe it's you know most most emotions down to six. Uh, basically six emotions. So when you're showing a character expression sheet, you only so, show six emotions. I forget what they are off the top of my head, but it's like anger, uh, disgust, happiness, uh, and a few others. I can't remember them all. Surprise. Um, so yeah, I go, again, draw from life. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's a just one source where uh, I can think of. Um, I know that Instructor I mentioned, Stephen Silver, has an app called Pose Book, which is good if you want to draw gestures in different uh, positions. And I also know that Schoolism has a course called Gesture Drawing that I took, um, and that was really valuable. So that's two Pixar artists that teach that, um, where you're basically drawing a model with, with them as they draw. Any other questions, guys? Oh, they get real creeped out. <laughs> Thank you for the question, wife. <laughs> Is Yellow Zoom here in Portland? Uh, no, they're a Canadian company. Um, so they do. They did a workshop at the Wacom Experience Center recently, um, where they had a few instructors come down, and they do uh, live workshops all over the country and actually all over the world. Um, but no, I think they're a Toronto-based um, company. But all their courses are online. How many courses did you take to get where you are? Sure. Um, I think I took, so they offer two different options. One are uh, one is the mentored version, where it's what I was talking about, where you can upload a design and somebody will actually sketch over it. Mm -hmm. They also offer just a subscription-based, which is just videos. Um, so you'll get all the lectures, but you won't uh, you won't have as much motivation to do the assignments because you won't have somebody you really respect looking at your stuff and drawing on it. Um, so I did, I believe, four of the subscription based, or, or sorry, the uh, mentor based, which are, th they're much more expensive, but they're worth it. Um, and then I did one of the just video lessons, and that one was for uh, uh, a digital painting course taught by guys from Tonko House, who used to work at uh, Pixar, too. Um, Dice Tutsami and Robert Kondo. How did you start finding freelance work? When you were that is the hardest question, yeah. Um, and I don't think there's a, a simple answer. Um, so the first step, th there's a process, though. So the first step for me was to get a portfolio together that wasn't terrible. Um, once I had that, I had a website, uh, or I started a website that had my portfolio on it. Then I reached out to every uh, animation and design firm in Portland. I just emailed them and said, hey, I'm interested in, in doing this. If you have any need for it, let me know. Um, and then slowly, I started to get jobs. But it, it's not like you send off your stuff and everybody uh, is like, oh, great. We have this need right now. Uh, <laughs> That's perfect. Um, so actually, uh, the place I've been working at the past, I think it's been about five weeks now, I met, I met them two years ago. And they said, hey, we love your stuff. We'd love to work together sometime. And I said, OK, cool. And then two years passed. And finally, we're working together. And it's been awesome. And it's been really fun. But uh, it's a slow process to basically build up those clients. And I feel like um, emailing out your resume, uh, joining job groups. So there's a company called Scopic, and there's another called Portland Creative List. And both of them are basically, if you're creative, you can put up your stuff. If you're looking for creative people, you can post jobs. Um, so those are, I've gotten a few jobs through them. Um, but eventually, it becomes word of mouth. So right now, uh, I've been busier than I have in the past three years, only because I've done enough projects now where people start to refer you. Uh, I love 
drawing potatoes. <laughs> uh, and I draw a ton of food. So uh, about a year ago, I did a, a art show, and I needed to come up with a theme. And I was looking through my drawings, and I noticed how many were food-based. Um, so I started doing, I think it was something like 36 paintings of, of food characters. And I still love drawing food, even after all that. And it was like so hard to get that many. Um, I, they're still really fun to me. Mainly because I think, you know, some of those things I talked about, like interesting shapes and, and uh, kind of a, a tie. You know, we have an emotional uh, relationship with food. It's, it's really easy to get at some of the points that I was talking about earlier. Um, oh, and I know Meryl wants me to say business trout which is a, a fish with, with business pants. I like to draw him a lot. <laughs> uh, struggle against having a look that you try to evade? You um, a variety of looks? Or yeah. Um, that? No, that's a great question. Um, so I feel like most recently that's been a struggle in that um, when I'm doing uh, art fairs and craft fairs and selling my own merchandise. I want that to have a really consistent look. Um, but for my freelance side, I want the opposite. I want to show that I can do a variety of things, that I can do you know, simple iconic and I can do more naturalistic, I can do really pushed and I can do more subtle. Um, which kind of led me to now I'm, I'm separating those out more uh, more permanently where my freelance side is all under my name and my uh, shop and everything is moving to a, a Jolly Good Gang is the name of that company and that's going to be its own entity. But it was for that reason where I, you know, the conflicting needs where I want a consistent style for what I'm selling and I want to have that focused. But then for freelance, I want to show a variety. Yeah. Yeah, so I had done the book that I um, that I did on my own that I wrote and illustrated um, was the result of two previous books. So the first book I did, excuse me, was uh, a traditional publisher, big publisher, and they had a um, a lot of there were a lot of hands in the pot, and we were on you know it's a thirty six page book, and we're on rev fourteen of each page, so it's just a crazy amount of work and and reworking. Uh, and so I didn't love that. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to self-publish my next one. And so that one I worked with my brother, Mike, um, and he wrote the story. He's a writer. Um, and I illustrated. And that was fun. But again, it's uh, having the full creative control is always, always the gem, right? Um, so then after that second book with my brother, I decided, all right, I'm going to write and illustrate my own. Um, and it was it was a whole lot of back and forth. I had the characters in mind before I had the story. And for me, it was drawing those characters and doing you know, the gesture drawing of them and, and putting them in different scenarios. And um, like I, you know, in, in schoolism training, one thing they ask you is like, how would your character drink a cup of coffee? Or how would they do this and this? And putting them in different scenarios kind of forces you to um, think about what their personality is and how they act in those scenarios. So I did a lot of that before I started writing anything. Um, I just had the uh, concept uh, before I started writing. Any other questions? You had mentioned like the ladder before. Oh yeah. To Like even on that, that witch drawing, I don't know if you saw it, but there's a point where I had the rough roughed out where I drew lines off of the major points. Um, and that's only for me to compare spacing basically to avoid that. So once you do that, you can be like, all right, well, let's smush the head a bit. Let's stretch this. And always, you know, you, you want it to be for a purpose. You, want, uh, you don't just want to change it to change it uh, to avoid the letter. Um, but it, it's always a nice check-in. So I do that. I just kind of, when I have a rough sketch, I'll do that before I do any final inking. Do you find you want to do the environments surrounding your character as much as you want to do the character? No. 
I don't like environments. And I, I uh, you know, with, with some freelance work, I, I do environments. And um, I'm OK at them, but I don't, for whatever reason, I don't have the same passion for it where with a character, I could just draw characters all day. I do draw characters all day. And then I go home and I draw characters. And I don't know why. And it's weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for environments, it, it feels like a different skill set to be able to design beautiful environments. And I'm uh, like a fledgling at, at environments. I'm not, I'm not the best. I mean, you gave up as an example. And I, I look at the house and up, and I look at the character and I look at the furniture, and they're all so interrelated. Yeah. I imagine it would be kind of imperative to have that. Yeah, yeah, it's very true, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why it's hard for me. Like, so buildings and props, I do like doing those. Uh, more of the set design, I think that's really interesting. But uh, the landscape and uh, uh, that's that's a little less interesting oh, I, to me. I see the skill set. Yeah, and especially with my uh, product design background, to, like knowing how things work, um, I feel like I, I really enjoy drawing props and, and doing that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the. Yeah, there's some beautiful environment design, or there's some beautiful environment design out there, and I, that's not my strong suit. <laughs> yep. Are you ever going to do another art show? Like, are you planning any more? Yeah. Um, so at the same place, uh, it's Jola. Um, they're going to do one in March. March? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll have another one up there. So I have to start painting. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a question too? Yeah, uh, what's the most common ask that you get? Like what makes up the most of your paid work? Um, I'm not sure there's, hmm. I'm not sure there's any consistent. So, so it's been like uh, a range from like animation firms to an insurance company that wanted some characters. So I, I'm, I don't know, it's usually, I feel like they find me and they have seen my portfolio so they, they know kind of among what I show there, which style they want something close to. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's a, a common character ask I get. Anything else, guys? Um, I got a question. Yep. So if, do you think there's a specific reason that you're drawn so much to characters? I mean, do you have a place to clarify why that? Yeah, um, and I'm not sure. <laughs> Honestly, um, I like people. I like interacting with people, and I think that's probably at the core of it. Is uh, I'm a pretty social guy, and I like um, meeting new people and having conversations. And I think that's what it is. Is this is a way to kind of capture those people or, or parts of those people and put them into designs? Um, yeah, but I, I haven't figured that one out yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you done much animation of your own characters? Like, actually, made Grace the dog? And no, I haven't. I haven't. I've never animated anything. But I am super interested in doing it because it feels like the next evolution of, of designing a character is to actually feel how they move. And, and I think it'd be really fun. But that is, that's a whole nother skill set. Uh, and it's, it's a tough field, definitely. And there are a lot of hours that go into that. Um, so I think eventually I will want to start foraying into that, but uh, yeah, not yet. I haven't tried it. Still figuring out character design, so. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any um, sketchbooks or pencils that you like particularly well? Um, I buy really cheap sketchbooks, um, <coughs> so I think yeah, this one. I always get this one. I like this size. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I bought them today, and the guy was like, oh, you're a student? And I was like, oh, no, but uh, <laughs> I, just, I like the cheap sketchbooks. <laughs> um, I do like, uh, these are these are nicer, the Copic 0.7 uh, fine liners. I really love these. Uh, oh, and this is my favorite thing to sketch with. These are the Cola Erase. Uh, you can get a light blue or a red. Um, Pencil, they're erasable. I don't, I don't really erase them, um, 
but they're great because you can draw with them, you can ink over that drawing, and then uh, basically you can color correct the blue out of the inking, so it'll come out as just a clear inking if, you're, uh, if you bring it into Photoshop. So these are, these are awesome. Uh, they're old animator pencils. I use Illustrator some um, for more vector-based or shape-based uh, character designs. But yeah, typically I'll, I'll start everything in a sketchbook and then um, do Photoshop for the, the final or more refined renderings. Um, I've played around with some other softwares and uh, to me Photoshop does everything I need. And I've played around with it. I don't have one, but yeah, I've heard Procreate's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't used it extensively. All good? <laughs> Do you, I have one more side. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I get that question a lot too. That's one of the most common ones. Um, and I don't, I use the default, uh, I use the default Photoshop brush for almost everything. Um, I have two rendering brushes I use sometimes that have a little more of a, a chunky feel to them. Um, one of them was from a course I took through Schoolism. They'll give you, they give you their brush set. Um, and then another is just another default Photoshop brush. But no, I don't like to mess around with brushes too much. I feel like, um, to that earlier point, that's where you can get lost in, in some of the details um, where I feel like you can, you can get everything you need with the, with the basics. One last question. Yeah, yeah, what's up? Um, so I'm just curious, because now you're kind of what used to be your passion turned into your career. Oh, yeah. And I'm curious how you keep your balance and How's that going for you? Do you still enjoy drawing on the side, or are you yeah, yeah. So that's what's been weird about this. So with industrial design, <clears throat> I was really into it in uh, college, and then once I started working in it, I never would draw at home. Um, and with this, I still go home and I draw. My wife can attest to it. <laughs> um, I just I don't know why I just don't stop. It's, it's still really fascinating to me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I guess, yeah, this is more my passion than industrial design ever was, and I still love doing it. Again, I'm only, what, three or four years into it, so maybe in 10 years, I'll feel jaded and, <laughs> and hate it. <laughs> but I really love it right now, and it's, and it's still exciting to me. Sweet. Thanks for coming, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay.